Hi guys, it's Hannah R. Lambency and welcome back to another doll customization video. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made Katra from DreamWorks, She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. This is Katra's season 5 outfit. As soon as I finished the series I was like, I need to make her. Katra is one of my favorite characters and overall She-Ra just means a lot to me as a gay woman. It's just it's really special to me, so I was very excited to do Katra, and I really hope to do more She-Ra characters in the future. It's such an amazing show. I'm still thinking about the finale, even though it happened like three months ago. <laughs> oh, it is so amazing. Anyway, let's get started. The doll head I'm using is Howling Wolf from Monster High. I picked this one because I love the face mold and also she doesn't have human ears so it'll be easy to just cut off her wolf ears and replace them with cat ears. I already cut off all of her hair so let's take the head off and pull out the remaining hair plugs. I leave the doll in hot water for about 10 to 15 minutes to soften the head and make it easier to pull the head off. It also makes it easier to squeeze when I'm taking out the hair. I use tweezers to get all of the hair and old glue out. Next, I use an X-Acto knife to cut off the wolf ears. I covered up the giant holes with epoxy sculpt. I also used epoxy sculpt to make her new ears. Once I got the initial shape of the ears down, I started detailing it. Once the clay hardened, I sanded it until smooth and painted on a base with white acrylics. I used an orangey pink color for the insides of the ears and the rest is just black. Now let's add some fur. I took wool roving used for needle felting and added it to the ears with a bit of fabric glue. For Katra's hair, I used brown 100% acrylic yarn. I cut strands to the length I wanted and then tied them onto a metal hoop so that I could brush it out. I used what's called a slicker brush for pets. I brush out the yarn starting from the bottom and then working my way up. I keep brushing until there are no more tangles. Once everything was brushed out, I used a flat iron to straighten the yarn hair. Then I cut the hair off the hoop and set down plastic wrap to glue the hair onto. I used tacky glue to coat the tops of the hair and press the glue down with a plastic palette knife so it really gets saturated.
Once the glue dried, I peeled the hair off from the plastic wrap and cut off the excess glue at the top. Then I glued the hair wefts onto the head. I originally thought I was going to change the skin color using soft pastels, but I ended up using acrylic paint instead, so I definitely recommend doing the face before the hair since it'll make things a lot easier. I honestly have no idea why I decided to do the hair first. It was a big mistake. But she turned out pretty cute in the end, so I guess it doesn't matter. I covered up her ears and hair with some fabric and pinned it in place. I removed the factory paint using 100% acetone nail polish remover and q-tips. I'm not a big fan of the Monster High body, so I decided to use a Bunny Blanc doll for Katra's body. I painted everything orange with acrylics and then added the little details like her black nail polish and arm stripes. Those arm stripes look really bad right now. I swear I went back and shaped them better. I did use Howling Wolf's hands because I liked how they looked like claws. I painted a white base onto Katra's face and then once that dried I went over it with a couple layers of orange. Once it all dried I sprayed it with Mr. Super Clear and added blush using soft pastels. Now to draw on the face. I used Faber-Castell watercolor pencils. I started off with their freckles because they're just so cute I couldn't help it. I used a light brown color for the initial sketch of the face and gradually darkened it. Mr. Super Clear or some other kind of sealant, it's super important in making the face more vibrant. You definitely can't do everything on just the first layer. Anyway, I wanted Catra's expression to be when she's looking at Adora. I wanted to capture just how much she loves her. Oh, they're so cute. Catra Adora is definitely my favorite fictional couple of all time. The friends to enemies to lovers trope is amazing and it's WLW, so... Lumity from the Owl House is also already up in my top 5, even though it's only on its first season, but I'm just loving how the development is going and I'm so happy that gay relationships in children's media is becoming more accepted. It's so good for kids to be able to see themselves in the shows that they watch. We need more representation in media. I feel like if I had seen shows like that when I was a kid, I would have realized and accepted my sexual orientation much sooner, and I wouldn't have had to gone through so much confusion. Anyway, I sprayed it one last time with Mr. Super Clear and then added gloss varnish to the eyes and lips to make them shiny. Now for Katra's clothes. These are the colors I'm using, which were the closest I could find. They're all stretchy knit fabrics. I'm only using one pattern for this, which is a catsuit pattern, <laughs> catsuit, but it's complicated because all the color blocking. I linked the pattern and a color blocking tutorial down in the description. To put it simply, you trace the initial pattern onto separate paper, draw where the different sections will be, and then add seam allowances. Here are all the different pieces. I've got four black leggings and a black upper bodice piece, two back bodice pieces, one front bodice piece, two back pant pieces, and one front piece. I used fray check on all the cutouts so that it doesn't unravel. Now to attach all these pieces and make it back into one catsuit piece. 
First, I attach this piece to the bodice. Now I've got her entire bodice plus a section of her back. Then I attached the back bodice pieces. Next up are the pants. I sewed both the front and back pant pieces. Finally, the black leggings. Now everything is together. Next, I folded the catsuit right sides together and sewed along the back, leaving an opening for the Velcro closure. Then I folded everything together and sewed all along here, leaving an opening for the arms to go through. I cut off the feet and tucked the unhemmed fabric under so it looks nice. I really did not like how the side cutouts looked, so I just glued some black ribbon over it. Finally, Katja's tail. I wrapped the same black wool roving I used for her ears around a piece of wire and then used needle felting to shape it. I hand stitched the tail onto the back of her outfit. Then I added velcro to the back of her outfit and done! I realized way later that I forgot to make her little belt thing so I just folded black bias tape in half and sewed it and then added snaps. I had to retake all my pictures. But I love how Katja turned out and I hope you like it too. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!